On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Houthi lose a blowfish out in the Red Sea. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. We're back here at home headquarters of What's Going On With Shipping. My computer is back up and running and everything is A-OK for broadcast from home station. Uh, We're going to look at this attack that has been circulating around social media video showing an attack by a Houthi unmanned surface vessel against a container ship and the actions by the defense detachment on board, the armed security detachment, to neutralize this threat. Now, I want to take a moment here and say something. I'm going to post this up on YouTube. It's going to be up on YouTube. I monetize my videos. It's one of the ways I help offset my time I put together for these videos. I am pretty sure that YouTube is going to demonetize this video. For some reason, even though this is educational and I am not showing graphic violence in any way, they keep coming back in and demonetizing these videos because of the fact that I show an explosion, even though you don't see anything. So I just want to make you aware of that. I'm not trying to get your sympathy or anything like that. But just understand, this is what YouTube tends to do. And I know a lot of people say shift platforms, but YouTube gets me the biggest audience and also generates probably the best revenue. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this story. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, this is the video. It's about a minute, 22 seconds long. I'm going to play it throughout its entirety here in a second. And then we're going to come back in and analyze it in a little bit of details what you're about to see here is a small boat what's referred to as a blowfish by h.i sutton over at covert shore this is a remotely operated vessel an uncrewed surface vessel that is nowhere near the level of sophistication of what we see with the ukrainians we'll talk about why that's happening in a second the attack is against a vessel the motor vessel pumba i know it doesn't say that on the stern of this vessel but this is that vessel I'll talk about how we identified that vessel because we were able to positively identify this attack. And the ship was transiting from Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, heading out into the Indian Ocean. This is a notice issued by the United Kingdom's maritime trade uh, operations. This came out on, this is attack 103 on the motor vessel Pumba on uh, 20 July 24 at 0300 UTC. Received a report of an incident 64 nautical miles northeast of Al Muka, Yemen. Update one, the master reports two attacks. The first by an uncrewed aerial systems, which exploded in close proximity to the vessel, resulting in minor damage. The second by an uncrewed surface vessel, which also exploded in close proximity to the vessel. The master has subsequently reported further UAS sightings. Those are the aerial vehicles. Update number two, the company security officer reported a missile sighted at 0805 UTC, splashing in close proximity to the vessel. Both the vessel and the crew are safe. That attack would put them at the very southern end of the Red Sea, just heading into the Bab el Mandab. And as is tradition here at What's Going On With Shipping, when you mention the Bab el Mandab, cheers. So we're going to watch this video, and like I said, we'll do a run-through of it, and then we'll break down the video in some detail. All right, a lot of information in a minute and 22 seconds that I want to break down for you now. 
All right, I'm going to let this play. We're going to magnify it up. I apologize. We degrade in quality here. I, I don't have one of those computers that just enhance. But we're going to run it and try to break down what we're seeing as this transpires. No, I'm not. So one of the things I noticed in this video right off the bat is the ship speeds up. There's a big plume of black smoke emitted by the vessel. So they're increasing speed as this craft comes closer. Now, as we talked about before, Chai Sutton over at his site, has, and I'll have the link above here for you and in the show notes, has broken down really what type of craft they are. The Houthi attack boats, the blowfish as he calls them, are guided by remote control, by basically radio control by other boats that are near the area. They are they don't seem to have the optical guidance that the Ukrainian vessels have. And that becomes very clear as you watch this boat approach. It starts heading in, then it'll zoom out, head in again. It's continually correcting its approach. And that is because it's probably being controlled from a distance. So you can't really see it very well. And if it's being controlled optically, they just don't understand. What they need to do is get on a constant bearing and decreasing range, and they will run into a vessel. They're continually adjusting here as they go. Yes, give me my there's that adjustment we see uh, yelling in the background, either Russian or Ukrainian. I apologize. I just can't pick out what it is. I've seen it identified as both in, in comments. You hear the weapons being cocked at this time. Yeah, it's fucking on men. See that black smoke right there? That's the vessels coming in. So they're using what looks like FN Fals. These are Belgian rifles. Uh, I am not, this is not what's going on with guns. I apologize. I am not a gun expert at all. I have guns, but not a gun expert when it comes to long rifles like this. But it looks like an FN Fal. And that's interesting because it's a 7.62 millimeter. They're not using 5.56. They want a little bit of a longer reach with a little bit more hitting power on it. And that seems to be what they're using. Some people will comment, why don't they have rockets? Why don't they have mini guns? Why don't they have, you know, M250 calibers on there? Understand that security detachments come on and off vessels as they enter this region. They're small offshore patrol vessels operated by a variety of different companies that embark these crews. These crews ride through the region from the Gulf of Aden through the Bab el Mandab into the Red Sea. They get off and then ride another vessel back. Crew weapons are a tough thing to get into countries. You cannot go into a foreign country when fully armed. They're just not going to let you in. And getting machine guns, rockets are an issue. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have them on there. I'm just telling you the reason they don't. And these are also not flagged vessels of sovereign states, you know, beyond open registries. In this case, this ship is Liberian flagged. So you're not going to get the Liberian Navy or Marine Corps on board. All right, let's go back to the video. Again, you've seen that zigzag pattern. This is not an invasion plan. This is them trying to run in, into the side of the vessel. Notice this track they're taking. They're hitting in toward the engine room of the vessel. This is where they're going. This is a container ship. So they're not trying to hit the cargo holds. They seem to be coming in toward the stern of the vessel, aiming for either the engine room or potentially the rudder. And here you see rifle shots going off. This area in red here, this is, this is the starboard bridge wing. They're heading forward toward the camera. Uh, that is an antenna area right there. And then you see a fire main that's also painted in red down below. So this is the this is the, the security detachment on board. There's nothing better than helmets, flak vests, and shorts in which to be firing your FN fails off the stern side of a vessel. Uh, this is fairly typical of what you see uh, on security detachments on board. Usually about a three-person security detachment. So right there, you're starting to see rifle fire pretty close to the vessel. We're seeing the water splashes go up. And then you're going to see a couple of shots actually hit it. And then you'll see the detonation. So 
So that snap of a detonation was surprising to me because it did not seem as big as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I expected a much larger explosive warhead on here. It is still substantial, don't get me wrong, but it did, was not as big as I thought it was going to be, as some of the vessels we've seen attacks on the Tudor, on the Chios Lion, those were very large explosions. This seems to be more subdued. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Video, video. I got that. Get the video. I mean, we're under attack, but we gotta be able to make TikTok. Good job, blad. This is the motor vessel Pumbaa, and the reason I know it is is if you look at the starboard bridge wing, the the bridge wing to the right there. You'll see it has an awning on it. There is a kind of greenish uh, spotlight there. There is a binnacle uh, also there. There's a control station in that same color. And then there's an antenna coming in off that area. And when you come back over here, you see that same setup. So this matches for me uh, identification. You can see the uh, binnacle right there. You can see the control station. You can see the over, uh, the kind of the, the, the the awning set up right there, spotlight right there, and then that antenna is back there. And that matches up exactly with the vessel that we expected it to be. Here's the story over in Container News. A container ship operated by Sea Lead Shipping was attacked by Houthi missiles and drones. 2006 built, 5,059 TEU Pumba was deployed to Sea Lead's Five Seas Express Service connecting China to the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Vessel tracking data shows Pumba departed Saudi Arabia's port of Jeddah on 17 July and was likely heading toward Egypt's Port Syed. Uh, it wasn't. It head south and was going through the region. Houthi spokesman Yari Sri said Pumba was targeted because it is an American ship. Again, six degrees of separation to everything the Houthi attack. The Houthi are now widening their target range. On 19 July, a Houthi drone hit an apartment block in Tel Aviv, killing a civilian. Yah said the drone used is a novel type that can evade detection. However, the Israelis struck back and on 20 July bombed the Yemen port of Hadia. SP Global data shows that the Liberian flag Puma is registered to a Liberian entity, Pumba Shipping. However, Container News understands that the ship is controlled by Singapore-based Draco, uh, Draco Buren Shipping. Sea lead spokesman told Container News, quote, Pumba is a chartered vessel and was subjected to a minor attack while transiting the Red Sea without causing any casualty or damages to the crew, the ship, and her cargo. Ship is safe and proceeding toward her destination. Both Sea lead and the owners have implemented strict precautions, including armed guards. This is that service that we were talking about that Sea lead initiates from China through the Malacca Straits in Malaysia and then through the region in and around Yemen and heading up into the Mediterranean. Here's the details on Pumbaa from marine traffic. Again, she is currently tracking out in the Red, uh, out in the Arabian Sea after leaving the port of Jeddah. So the other part of this is the strike initiated by Israel against Yemen, specifically against the Houthi, the port of Haditha. And the imagery comes up, is looks pretty bad. If you watch the videos, again, this is satellite image showing the burning of the oil facilities in and around the port and terminal. They also hit the container cranes there. If you look over at the port under marine traffic, here's that same area. So these are those oil tanks that were hit, but notice there are ships still up here along the berth. And one of the things that stands out about these ships is that all these ships have their own cargo gear on board. In other words, they are what we call self-sustaining they can offload themselves. They have their own cranes and booms, and therefore they are not dependent on shoreside facilities. That is a characteristic of the ports in and around Yemen. Because of the, the infrastructure being in such poor shape, there's no indication that those container cranes that the Israelis hit were being used. Uh, they haven't moved in a long time. And so the port is still in operation. Uh, there's ships still off the, per the berth coming in. The strike against uh, Yemen by the Israelis was in retaliation for that strike against Tel Aviv. And what we're seeing again is this ratcheting up. So this is a story out of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, U.S. launches effort to stop Russia from arming Houthis with anti-ship missiles. A U.S. commander sent confidential letter warning that the U.S. is failing to deter Red Sea attacks on shipping. 
What I want to focus in the story is not so much that Russia may be sending missiles to the Houthi. I, I don't kind of believe that myself. But it's this statement. Kirilla, who's the army general in charge of U.S. Central Command, called in his letter to Austin, the Secretary of Defense, for a stepped up, quote, whole of government, quote, unquote, effort against the Houthis, employing economic, diplomatic and potentially stronger military pressure to discourage attacks on ships in the Red Sea and narrow strait known as Bob El Mandeb. Of Yemen's coast, officials said, at least 30 ships have been damaged and two have been sunk. Many people found the tone of the memo to be a lot, a bit shocking, a defense official said. It said essentially U.S. service members will die if we continue this way. I think that General Kirilla is, is maybe a fan here of what's going on with shipping because we've been talking about a lot on this channel that there needs to be more than just a military approach. There needs to be a whole of government approach, economic, political, social, you name it. There needs to be leverage. You can't just be playing whack a drone and think you're going to achieve this. In my latest video on What the Ship, our episode, story number three on the Red Sea, I talked about the tale of two carriers and the fact that the deployment of the Teddy Roosevelt appears to be substantially different from that of the Eisenhower. And I think this goes to prove that issue here as we're changing out the command here. It looks like we're going to reassess what's happening. Ships like Pumbaa that sailed through is low order vessels. These are not very high expensive vessels. And remember, if you're running a vessel of under a hundred million dollars shipping cargo through the area, the war risk insurance is a bit of a wash. You would go ahead and pay it to have that route. And so, especially as the rates go up to deliver. And so we're going to see more vessels potentially exposed. Now, this deterrence, this this detonation of an uncrewed surface vessel may give some ships a hope that, okay, we can beat these things off, but you got to be careful about that. That was one uncrewed surface vessel coming in. It wasn't at night, uh, and that vessel gave them a lot of opportunities to shoot at. That may not be the case going forward. I think we're seeing a substantial step up here in the level of attacks. And at the same time, we're seeing a pullback of the U.S., the U.K., the EU, and all the other forces that are in and around the area. We are definitely coming to an inflection point as we move forward. At the same time, go to that What the Ship episode I just did. We talk about issues with spikes in global inflation, freight rates increasing, delays. All of that is impacting across the board. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it because I'm probably not going to get paid for this because I showed a boat blowing up and YouTube hates that. They don't hate boat blowing up. I hate boats blowing up, but they hate it because I'm talking about the Houthi. If you did, hey, support the page. How do you hit do that? Well, you hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly and yearly subscriber. Till our next video, Sal, signing off.